Did you know that every day there are millions of entrepreneurs who don't have a business plan? Many don't even know what a business plan is. In fact, I'm not just a spokesperson here today. I too didn't know what a business plan was. Hello and welcome back to the Omaha Podcast, where Omaha's most successful entrepreneurs help you grow your business. I'm your host, Matt Tompkins of Two Brothers Creative, and in this episode, we will learn exactly what a business plan is, how to create one, and why it's important to create one, even if your business has been open for years. The Nebraska Business Development Center is back on the podcast to help you, and maybe me, craft a winning business plan for free. They say that a goal without a plan is just a wish. So what is a business without a plan? Is it kind of like that uh, if a tree falls in the forest uh, and nobody hears it, did it really happen? Uh, is it that type of situation where are you really a business if you don't have a plan? We are going to find out today. Uh, we are joined uh, by yet another uh, member of the amazing team over at the Nebraska Small Business Development Center here. Uh, we have Tony Schultz. Hello, Tony. Thank you for uh, coming on the podcast. Well, Matt, how's it going today? And you are, I'm good. I'm excited for this yeah. because we're going to talk about business plans today on the uh, on the podcast. We had Kathy on and uh, she, I feel like she opened this whole new world that uh, many of us didn't even know existed with the Nebraska you know, Business Development Center, all the different resources and personnel and experts. A lot of it doesn't cost you anything. It's the, the basic uh, stuff you can get there is no, no cost. It's fully confidential. And I do believe her when she says it's the best kept secret in the state of Nebraska. It, it really is. That's uh, that's why we do these outreach things like this, podcasts and, and events and things like that. People uh, just don't know about us, so, and we want to get the word out. <laughs> and, and the services yeah. are, are free, no cost, confidential, so why not take advantage of them? There's, and there's they're no reason not to. they're legitimate, too. I mean, they're legitimate services. Uh, we are going to do some episodes about how to secure government contracts, uh, funding for your business idea, a lot of different types of funding. If you know, if you were, uh, if you hit certain qualifications, you can get different types of funding that maybe other you know business owners, entrepreneurs can't. But we wanted to start with a business plan and today talk about how to create a business plan because that's, that's a step that I think most people just either don't know exists or they just skip entirely and that's step one, it really is. Like, what's your plan? Yeah. What's your idea? How are you gonna help people with this idea? I didn't even know about business plans being <laughs> such an integral part of a successful business, you know, until we had Kathy on, and then she's telling me about this. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm like years into my business already, <laughs> and we're gonna get to that. We will help people who are years in, but let's just start with the basic premise. What is a business plan? Yeah, so I like to, to uh, if I'm going to build a skyscraper, I'm going to go out and I, I'm going to build this skyscraper. I'm going to get the metal together and the glass together, and I'm going to get some cement. And am I going to just throw everything together? Probably not, because the skyscraper is going to fall over. It's going to yeah. crush a car or two, maybe other people. Not, it's it's not going to be good. I think the same person <laughs> built my uh, my treehouse in the backyard. <laughs> is it leaning a little? Just yeah, going to oh, fall it's on over. the ground. It yeah, it's down, on the yeah. ground. And right. that person was me, just you know. So yeah. yeah. So, so, anyway. so if you'd had an architectural drawings yeah. and engineering, some schematics, maybe the treehouse wouldn't have fallen over. Maybe and, a few and, less yeah. beers involved. Yeah, well, yeah, that probably could make a difference too. Yeah. Better chance. So, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I liken a business plan to really having those those architectural drawings of schematics for a skyscraper. You want that foundation, you want that plan before you dive into it, because if you just build it, a lot of times that stability's not there, that foundation's not there, and that's what the business plan's gonna do. And really you see this in, in pretty much every other facet of our everyday lives. A plumber doesn't come in and just guess where he's gonna drill a <laughs> hole, <laughs> you know? I mean, maybe there's some do, I don't know. Again, uh, probably more in my wheelhouse of the uh, capabilities there if they're just <laughs> drilling random holes in the, in the wall. But you need to know what you're doing. You need to have a plan. And, you know, that's one of my favorite quotes. You know, if, if a goal without a plan is just a wish. You're just wishing, you're just dreaming, which is fine, but it's, it's never gonna come to fruition if you don't put down actionable things that you can do. You can't decide what to do until you know what you need to do, right? right. So we talk about a business plan just being the blueprint, basically. Yep. The basic blueprint. So how do people 
like banks, lenders, investors look at a business plan, how does that impact their decision to fund a new idea from an entrepreneur, perhaps their first time? Like, how much does this really impact it? Uh, because I, I think a lot of people maybe don't think it has that big of an impact. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it probably does. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. If you if you go to any lender, any any bank out there, they're going to want to see a business plan. And the reason is they want to see are they going to get their money back? If I'm going to loan you money, I, I'm not just going to hand you money and go, hey, here's twenty bucks. See you later. I hope I see you again sometime. You return it. Probably well, not going to. I mean, you don't have to pay to come on the show. Well, yeah, well, I, your money. I slipped you, you a couple bucks earlier, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but, yeah, so, I mean, that, that's really the point is they want paid back. They, they want their investment back. The same with any kind of investor. So they want to know the money they're putting into the business makes sense. They're going to want to see, does the entrepreneur – know what they're doing. Have they done the research? Do they have the experience to do this business? Do they have the background? Things like that. And really that's what the business plan does is it sells the idea that this can actually work. So that that's the whole idea. And it's selling it in a way that I think is more measurable. You know, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but yep. a tangible, measurable way to show that this is a legitimate idea that will work or has a good chance of, strong chance of working because it's it, entrepreneurs, myself included, we get very passionate. We kind of, you know, uh, I think Joe is, uh, who brought this up on an earlier episode said, you know, entrepreneurs, they jump off the cliff and then they build the airplane on the way down. <laughs> and that's very true, that's very accurate. We're kind of a, a kooky bunch. We just take the risks, we dream big. But the problem, the problem isn't selling the big idea. It isn't getting people excited. It's okay, but now you need more than just enthusiasm. You need money. You need funding to actually make this thing happen. And those people, they want the data. So it's the the uh, the, the sales pitch, if you will. And then there's the data, the numbers, the facts to back it up. Yep, and that's exactly right because it, every business starts with a problem in the marketplace. If there's not a problem in the marketplace, there really there really isn't a business. You have to have that solution to that problem. So it starts there. What's the problem? What's the solution? And if there is any, start over. Find something else because because you're not going very far. Yeah. But uh, that's where it really begins. And then researching it. Who are my customers? You know, where are they at? Are they interested in my product or my service? You know, is there a market out there? And building off of that and seeing what it looks like and then figuring out what are my peers doing? So if I'm opening a coffee store, I can say, hey, I wanna make $5 million my first year in my coffee store. But when you go to the bank and the bank looks at that and goes, ah, this isn't accurate for, for the marketplace. What we can do at the Nebraska Business Development Center is we can do benchmarking. So. If you come in and say, my coffee store is going to do $5 million the first year, we're going to look at it and go, okay, what do, what do Omaha metro area coffee stores do for, for revenue? And we can pull up that data. We can also look at the expenses, too. The whole idea is to prepare you so when you get in front of the bank, they're going to benchmark your numbers anyway. Mm -hmm. So we want to get ahead of that. We want to have you prepared. So when you're going in with numbers, you're building your business plan, those numbers are accurate for the marketplace. So that's really what it's all about. It's looking at your ugly baby and just admitting, okay, maybe my baby is a little <laughs> ugly, but he's still got a whole life. He can grow up to be a, a very handsome George Clooney type, maybe, um, or maybe just uh, settle for a Matt Tompkins type and, <laughs> and just, you know, uh, just be a, a local George Clooney-esque. I don't know why I'm comparing myself to George Clooney. Nobody's <laughs> going to buy that. I guess what I'm getting at is you have to admit the reality that you're seeing because the bank's going to see it too. The investors yep. are going to see it too. And it's easy to just look away from that baby. And, we, and with your finances especially, I don't wanna reconcile my books. We just did a whole episode about why businesses fail in the first year. And yep. a lot of it is just ignoring the basic things. The, as Jeremy Aspen put it, to quote him, the boring shit. You know, it's just yep. the, the things that you don't really wanna do, but they're, they're not fun. They're maybe not as cool or sexy to do but they are the most important, and this is one of them, right? It, it really is, and you don't have to be an expert in writing business plans. You don't have to have ever written a business plan before. The fact is you can come to Nebraska Business Development Center or other community partners out there and get the steps to go through it. And what I always say is when you're writing a business plan, start with the easiest thing first. What do you know? 
you probably know the operations of the business. You probably have an idea who your customer is. We can do some market research on that. But starting with the easy stuff kind of gets the momentum going. So you don't want to just sit down and, and start writing because you're going to hit that roadblock and be like, this is boring. I don't like it. Throw it in the garbage mm-hmm. and try to go f- do fun stuff. So I, I think that you just start, start a Google Doc. That's what I usually do with, I mean, podcasts that we produce for clients here. It follows the same model as a business because you should treat your podcast as a business and that's how it will you know be set up for success yep uh if you don't it's going to be really challenging to find that success so we do the same exercises ideal listener ideal customer who is your customer persona be very specific with that age sex people want to say oh, you know a person who's 20 to 60 years old and a <laughs> uh, man or woman two maybe four kids and like would you describe yourself that way like you know i'm mad i'm you know, maybe 20 to 50 years old and maybe two to four kids. I don't really know. I don't keep track of them. But those basic things, they're they're really crucial components. And it's not like it's a super complicated thing. You actually know a lot more than you probably give yourself credit for. So as you're saying, put that Google Doc together and just start putting this together. Here's who I think this ideal customer is. Here's what I want to get out of the business. Here's what here's what my role is. Here are the other roles I'm going to need, the other people and you know team members, the seats that I'm going to have to fill, the processes, the procedures. How are you going to actually get your customer from here to this transformed place of the the grand destination or the grand vision you have for them and what they're going to accomplish that's all things i think you have already in most people's minds it's already there it's just getting it down you know not on paper but on a google doc or some form and then come to you at the uh, nebraska business development center and then you're the experts in putting it all together right yeah. bring all the ingredients to you and you make grandma's you know apple pie so that I don't screw it up. Yeah, and, and we provide one-on-one free consulting. So it's sitting down on a Zoom call or even one-on-one or offices and going and saying, what's your business idea? You tell me the business idea. We go through the business plan structure, talk about the different sections the bank wants to see, talk about the different areas. And then as you build it, we're gonna provide feedback. We're gonna help you polish it up. So at the end of the day, we want you bankable. We want you to be able to go in with a business plan and financial projections, hand them to a banker, be able to answer all those questions. A lot of people say, hey, will you write the business plan for me? No, because it's not my business. And you don't know. Yeah. yeah. And know. how are you going to answer the lender's questions or the investor's questions if you didn't build the business plan, if you paid someone else to do mm-hmm. it? So that's the that's the tricky part. You're like ghostwriters with books. I think they, there's a different term now. They changed the term like where they just write the book anonymously and the, <laughs> the famous person gets all the credit. I mean, it, yeah. it kind of it's unfortunate for you because you deserve a lot of the credit. <laughs> I don't think you have to stay anonymous necessarily, but yeah. it, it's similar in that they are the expert at what they do and you're the expert with the idea and the experience and everything you bring to the table for this business idea and i know that we probably have a lot of people who have already just in the the last 10 minutes or so listening have googled business plan template uh, and are have maybe already even or even downloaded it uh like i'm sure a lot of resources canva other places have these types of templates why go with you guys over that, because I think that's the tendency is, well, I have to go down there, I have to schedule a Zoom or whatever it might be, it's gonna take time, and yeah, they say it's free, but is it really free? And people are skeptical. Sure. So they're just gonna try and do it themselves with a free PDF that they downloaded. Yeah. How is that going to backfire? Yeah, so if they get it all online, I mean, that's okay to start off, but the, the form that we have, and we have connections with the lenders, so that that's the big thing is we know the lenders, we know what they want. So when they come in, we can show them, hey, this is the information the lender wants to see. If you pull something off of Google, whatever, 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 it could be anything. Yeah. And we have literally seen financial pro- projection templates that people have put together their projections. We've gone through the formulas don't match, nothing adds up, the cash flows aren't right. I mean, everything is absolutely That was a mine that you saw, was it? Uh, yeah. I'm not gonna name names or anything, but. <laughs> but good, uh, good, yeah, it definitely wasn't yeah, me. Yeah, we're not definitely naming wasn't names. Me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's something that we see all the time is they try to pull it off the internet and they put it together and the form's not even right. So so mm-hmm. why waste time doing that? Just reach out to us, we'll, we'll get you the forms, we'll help you through the process, and it just makes life a lot easier. And, and you know, and I, I did this uh, similar thing just the other day with, uh, it was a proposal for 
a, a new account and it was putting all my thoughts together in the Google Doc and then organizing it based off of kind of the templates that I've used and put together and kind of tried and true. And then mm -hmm. the last step is then, yes, you can go to Canva or Photoshop or download a template that fits your style, your creative vision mm -hmm. and plug this information in there and dress it up so it does look. You want to look professional, you want yep. to look uh, polished and legitimate. And I would say like, you know, it's how they say, you know, showing up is kind of half half the uh, half the job, right? It's just showing up and being present, you know, showing up and looking professional with your business plan, having a business plan, period. Is that half the, the battle right there alone? It, it is really half the battle because if you do that, we've had so many clients that have gone to the lender and the lender says, no, I'm not gonna do the loan. Well, they didn't even have a business plan, didn't present any projections. And, you know, the fact is if you're prepared, we talked about Boy Scouts before, you know, yeah. being prepared like a Boy Scout. When you go in, you've got all the tools in front of you. So when you present it to the banker, you have a much better chance at a yes. And a business plan doesn't have to be a 30 page document. It doesn't have to be a 50 yeah, how long page dissertation. I mean, one. you could have, if it's a basic business, you might have seven to 10 pages and it's all information you already know. You mm -hmm. just got to get it down on the paper. Uh, the front page is the logo. The second page is just your table okay, of contents. Sure. So, yeah, so two there's two pages out, pages out the, the door. Yeah, yeah so you don't have to worry like, about anything. And then you could have yeah. a conclusion page and yeah, then you know, yeah. a headshot. So that, yeah, like, exactly. Now we're down to eight yeah, pages. That's, yeah. that's man. You can dial it down. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we get some clients that yeah, they add some fluff in there. Mm -hmm. The bank doesn't care about the fluff. They don't. They, nope. they want to know the basics of what are the business. And a lot of bankers, there's an executive section there's literally a summary of kind of key points out of the other sections. They'll look at the executive section of the business plan and they'll look at your financial projections. If they don't like that, it's going in the trash can. Mm -hmm. So those areas, the rest of it is all kind of just a, kind of the, the icing on the cake sort of thing. That if they have a specific area that they want to look at, they'll jump to it. But building out those areas is so important. But if you have that ahead of time, yeah. you're ahead of the game. You got a better chance. And, and there is a certain degree of, you know, the adage of who you know, it's all in who you know, and the networking and relationships. That is a big part of it because, you know, there are a lot of business plans that I would guess are pretty close. So where it's it could go either way. It doesn't look like it's a bad investment, but it doesn't look like it's a guaranteed investment for that return either. And then that's when that trust factor comes in. So if you are working with an organization uh, like the Nebraska Business Development Center, which, you know, long name, amazing results. <laughs> NBDC, yeah. you just yeah. go NBDC yeah. Yeah. for sure. NBDC, so. I know. I, always, I think I'm gonna get the acronym like screwed up in my head. That's I don't okay. know, I like, put too much pressure on myself there. It's a lot of letters, yeah. you know. I'm like, wait, NBC? No, no, okay. Um, but the credibility that you lend to any business, anybody walking off the street who's never done this before, has no relationships or connections with these banks, it is a pretty low chance that if it is close, they're gonna say, yeah, let's go with this complete unknown wild card here. Let's go with Matt. Or would they be much more likely to say, wait, Matt's with the, the NBDC and Okay, well, they're legit. They wouldn't be here, you know, in essence, vouching for them with this business plan if they didn't believe in this person. And so there has to be some value to that as well. So yeah, it goes back to the point, uh, there's a section of the business plan where we talk about listing your, your community partners or the people you're working with. And it could be your banker, your accountant, your insurance agent, your lawyer. We call it the bail team. So if you put it in order, it's ba they're gonna bail you out of trouble. Oh, I have a different bail team. Okay, well, yeah, yeah that might be different. But, yeah. but anyway, <laughs> the, uh, the idea is, you know, they, they list the NBDC on there so the, the lender knows they're working with, with the mm -hmm. NBDC. Now, we can't guarantee that's gonna be a successful business. We're never gonna call the banker and advocate for that client because it's the client's business, but we're gonna make sure that client's as prepared as they can be when they go in front of the bank. The other piece of that is you make a really good point. If you and I are walking down the street and I meet you for the first time and you say, hey, Tony, lend me 20 bucks, probably not gonna lend you the money. Yeah, I know. But I if I- out the hard way this morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if I've hung out with you and I know you and you say, hey, I, I need a 20 spot, can you lend it to me? I'm probably gonna lend it to you. Don't make the first conversation with your lender where you're asking for money. Mm -hmm. You know, have that conversation ahead of time, letting them know, hey, I'm gonna be coming to you for, for 
uh, alone. This is my business idea. This is what I'm putting together. These are the people I'm working out in the ecosystem. Have that be the first conversation. Don't be the first one where you're asking for money. So it just doesn't work. We're gonna be doing some some episodes about each of these different uh, laws, rules, uh, practicums to follow for marketing, which is marketing is relationships. Yep, It's just the human experience, really. Yep. Uh, the example you gave there is, is some really good things, and I wanted to hit on that in regards specifically to the business plan here too. Keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Clarity, brevity, simplicity, those are what you want to lean on the hardest and don't lean harder on creativity. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you try and lean too hard on the creativity and you don't cover the, the simplicity, brevity, and, and just getting to the point, short, concise, if you're too cool for the room, it, it's not gonna work, it just isn't. Now you can be creative and be cool in the room that you create within that structure, but you know, marketing and business It is a science as far as what works. It is not an art, it is a science. Now there's art in that science, absolutely. And creativity is is really cool to see how people incorporate it, make it their own. Mm -hmm. But most people miss that that step. So with your business plan, the tendency, I write way too long emails, my wife tells me all the time, she's (laughs) like, she even bought me a book, it's just called Brevity. (laughs) How to write shorter emails. two pages long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my kind of book, but. But yeah, you, you want to be just short, concise. You don't want the, uh, what is it, the TDLR, like too long, didn't read, mm-hmm. from your investors. So be simple, to the point. And then you also, you mentioned the, the first impression, you know, how you present yourself. Mm-hmm. You can never change your first impression. Once it has entered a person's mind, does not change. You doesn't matter how much money you spend or how hard you try, you will always be known as that first impression. And so keep that in mind. It's important, you know, don't like obsess over it. It's where it freaks you out and you're like having panic attacks, like, oh my God. <laughs> but you have to have to give it some of the respect that it deserves because you're doing a presentation, you have the data, you have everything you worked on, but there are a lot of other components in here you need to really factor in and consider. That, that's right, and, and you're exactly right. I mean, the fluff, the little extras, things like that, mm-hmm. not important get to the facts. Why is this business gonna be successful? How are you gonna be able to pay the bank back? How are you gonna be able to pay the investors back? Wait, 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 you have to pay them back? I, I know, thought it was it's, just like a gift. Yeah, no. This, oh, well, that explains why they're calling me all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the banks aren't into the grants, so you know, yeah. that's, <laughs> but. Uh, but again, uh, yeah. uh, sh- sh- uh, shameless plug, uh, that's another area. There are a lot of other areas for grants, for funding, for government contracts we're gonna get into at the Nebraska Business Development Center and I want everybody to know we are. This isn't like a paid advertisement or anything. We just kind of stumbled upon this hidden gem in the state of Nebraska, Nebraska's best kept business secret. Yep. And it is. I'm a small business owner, and I'm a few years into my my second run. My first run didn't go so well because I did everything wrong. And to know that all these things are available and that they're for the most part free and mm-hmm. confidential, and there's a place that business owners can go to and not feel judged be able to ask the questions they may be embarrassed to ask out loud at their networking group, um, which you know we'll get into that later too, because hopefully we can shatter some of those, uh, uh, the shame and guilt that we put on ourselves, but man, that's, that's what it's all about. So we are really passionate about what you're doing as well, because it's truly beneficial to the state, to small business owners. And we've talked so far in this episode about what you do when you are starting out with an idea and you haven't started your business yet. Mm -hmm. I wanted to wrap up with uh, a completely hypothetical scenario, all right? Definitely not a real person, okay? Let's just say this person is a, I don't know, Caucasian male, 41 years old, looks more like he's, you know, 31 years old, let's be honest. (laughs) Uh, Married in Omaha, Nebraska, let's say, as a, as a production company or something in the media, maybe a podcast or something. Mm-hmm. And let's say he's, you know, a couple years, one month, a few weeks into his second run at uh, the business ownership uh, experience, and he didn't put together a business plan. What does this person need to do as far as a business plan? Is it the same process? Is it different? And then why do they need to do it at this point? So that's a really good question. Usually in questions, I don't get as much detail as that. It's interesting how much detail there was. So I really- It was completely the more, hypothetical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't but know why, for yeah. hypothetical, it was 
Excellent I'm, detail. I, I'm a specific that. person. Yes. As I mentioned, you want to be <laughs> detailed and specific, right? We'll call this guy, we'll call him, I don't know, not Tompkins. How about Tom P. Kittens? There, there we go. There you Tom go. P. Kittens. That's a good you name. You know, definitely not Tompkins. Yeah. yeah Tom P. Uh, Kittens. Okay. Okay. All right. So I would say if you're already in the business, things are going well, things are going great. A lot of people are focused on operational things, which is great. The part that the business plan comes into at that point is what's my next step? What's my future look like? So do I wanna buy a land in a building to put my business in? Do I wanna go out and add locations? Do I wanna expand, things like that? And that's where the bank's gonna wanna see that business plan, the investors wanna see it. If you're operating along okay right now, things are fine, you're happy, there's no reason to go through an exercise you don't have to go through. But if you're looking to the future, you're like, what's my next step? What's what's the next horizon? What's the next thing I wanna do? Start thinking about that strategic planning piece of that business plan, and that's where, where it comes into play. Because again, the bank's gonna wanna see it, the investors are gonna wanna see it. The other piece is if you've written a business plan, don't throw it up on the shelf and let it sit there and collect dust. Look at it annually, check it out. What's working? What's not working? Okay. How do we evaluate who our customer is? What do we do differently? Make so, it part of your your uh, strategic, uh, you know, planning sessions for the quarter or the year. Yep. Uh, which is important to do that. I mean, we're, yep. we're doing that right now, going through the whole process again of like fine tuning. All right, who is our ideal uh, customer persona? And we're it's always a process of evolving and changing. Uh, so yeah, you do have it never ends. It's not like it's just yep. all right. We're good for eternity, you <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but the risk is real. If you mm -hmm. you know, there's that Silicon Valley expression of you know, grow or die. I don't know if we need to be that extreme or vote or die. Let's just have nobody die. Let's just say that you know your business can really start to plateau and flounder pretty quickly if you aren't bringing in new business. And so if you want to bring in new business, you're gonna need new resources, new ideas, new personnel, perhaps new uh, physical space, uh, a lot of different uh, digital assets you'll need. So. How are you going to accomplish that? You may not need to take out a loan, but a business plan not only tells the banks what you need, it tells you what you need. And that is, a, a I think, a step that most people don't even think about, or if they do, they skip it because they think, well, it's not that important, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the piece of that is, look at your competitors. They're not sitting there doing the same thing. They're, they're mm -hmm. not sitting there stable and, and not thinking about it. So to stay competitive, you have to be changing, you have to be adjusting, you have to be adapting. Uh, look at the time we had COVID, how many businesses that adapted during that had to adapt, had no yeah. choice. But I guarantee a lot of people that didn't have kind of an emergency operations plan or emergency plan in place thought, what if this happens? What are we gonna do? So being thinking about that all the time is really important, so. And, and we were a company literally born out of Mm -hmm. the situation as a result of the pandemic that changed how we interact with video and podcasting and all these different marketing tools. Uh, so you're right, I mean, it changes fast, it changes quick, and if you're not prepared, it can just, you can drown in it really yep. fast. And it, it, the, it, the stress level that I went through this, this past summer over a three week period proved to me just how quickly things can turn. Just if, I mean, just letting off of the the gas for, a couple of weeks and you can see immediate impacts that can scare the living shit out of you, just yeah. terrify you and put you in situations where that's where a lot of businesses fail. That's why 75% of businesses do not pay, make it past the 15 year mark. Yeah. You know, half of all Nebraska businesses fail. I think it's like 52% in the first five years. I mean, that is, those are some staggering truths right there. Yeah. This is how you avoid being on the wrong side of that percentage and starts with this and exploring all the other resources at the Nebraska Business Development Center. That's right. The NBDC. That's right. Yeah. I, I didn't even need like a hat, you know, like a there you like go. one of the, you know, the NBDC. Although it might get confused with like, you know, CSI Miami or something. <laughs> so, but we'll see. We can, we, we can, we'll work something up for you. There you Tony go. Tony uh, Schultz, you are the uh, state director for the NBDC and uh, we have a whole bunch of different resources you provided. They're in the show notes. You don't have to go anywhere. Just scroll down and click on them. Everything from a uh, template for a business plan to uh, some of the other suggestions and resources you have on your website. And there's so many other resources too, not just the business plan. This is just one small component, I important. I will, I will give you that, Tony, but yep. it's just one small thing. There is so many other resources 
every business in the state should know about this and take advantage of this. And I hope this episode has just blown your mind and changed your life forever. Yeah, and, and I think the part I'd add is, it's not just business plans, like you said, it's financial projections, it's market analysis. If you're going in, look at a new location, you want market analysis on that, reach out to us, mm -hmm. we do free market analysis. You wanna see, are my customers living in that area? What do the household incomes look like? You know, what, what, what do my competitors look like in that area? Those are great things, great resources that we have. Uh, we have a new tool, and I shouldn't say new because it's actually, it's its birthday. I think this coming week is called SourceLink Nebraska. Okay. So you get yeah, on SourceLink Nebraska, you can type in your zip code, you can type in what area of assistance you need. It's no cost, low cost resources that are out there throughout the entire state of Nebraska. So check it out. You need help with social media. You type in social media, type in your zip code. It will print off and show you, it won't print off, I'm old school, but it'll show you on the screen what the uh, resource partners look it. like. You yeah, you can download it. it. You yeah, that's what um, I'm looking for. So. Um, <laughs> yo, that's really cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm familiar with that a little bit. And we, we do have listeners in Hastings and Red Cloud yeah. and Lincoln and Kearney and all over the state of Nebraska, even all the way out in Seattle. I think there's some like former Nebraskans just reminiscing out in Seattle in the rain. So thank you for listening. And yeah. uh, once again, Tony, thank you so much for coming on. We'll put your contact information in the show notes as well so people can get a hold of you directly. Uh, thanks for what you're doing and congratulations on the promotion. To Now you're running the state, man. Now you know what's next, planet, yeah. planet Earth. Uh, yeah, maybe, okay. maybe. <laughs> Better put together a plan. Yeah, exactly. Better have a plan for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is the Omaha Podcast, where Omaha's most successful entrepreneurs help your business grow. 